Okay, James Randi is here tonight. And he is the author. James Rand is the author of The Faith Healers, and he's best known as an investigator of psychic and miraculous claims. Would you welcome, please, the amazing Randy. I was having a little, one, uh, little fun with the show on Houdini. I know you were on that show. Uh, you didn't think you'd... Uh, nothing you know, I happen, didn't did expect you? him to show up, John, but I also didn't expect what happened to me, which put me in the hospital for a couple of days. I noticed you were going to do the uh, something uh, and you... The uh, milk can, yeah, the Houdini milk can, and a uh, young fellow named Dean Gunnerson, with an hour and a quarter notice, stepped yep. into place and did the thing, and it's a death-defying stunt. I was amazed that he could do it, but uh, he came through for us and saved yeah, the show. He did. Yeah, it was a, he, he's very good. All right, what do you have that's semi-amazing tonight? Well, well, I, know you, I know you've been my Ill. title altogether. Yeah. Uh, I have a little stunt I'd like to show you that yogis have been doing for years, and they took some people in at the Menninger Clinic with it a few years ago, and it was published in the National Enquirer, so it must be true. All right. No what are you going to do? Let's uh, take a trip over here. You want here, me to go with and, you? Uh, we have, yes, please. All right. We have a couple of nurses that have joined us. A couple uh, of nurses. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here are the ladies now. Well, here we are with the nurses. Hi there. Hi. Uh, you're going to stand on uh, this side, I believe, or on this side, I'm sorry. Side. You are, uh, uh, by the way, who are you? Hi, I'm Pam. Hello, Pam. All right. Yeah. I'm Joan. Hello, Joan. How are you? What are you going to do here? All right, Joan and Pam are going to take my pulse. Now, that sounds like a relatively simple thing for you to do, and uh, your experience of doing that, I yes. suppose, are you? All right. Absolutely. And we've got uh, Ed and Pete over there on the drums and on the guitar. They've been rehearsed as to what to do. I'm going to ask you to take my pulse, ladies, and with the free hand, you don't have to time the pulse, Joan, with the free hand, as you feel the pulse beat, I want you to do this with your finger, okay, as if you're conducting an orchestra. And the two gentlemen in the band, um, Ed and Pete, are going to... Uh, they're going to respectively watch each one of you. Ed will be here on this side, and Pete will be on this side. And follow those fingers. Watch those fingers carefully, and give me a little shot on the drum and a little plunk on the guitar as you see the finger come down. I won't suggest you what's going to happen, right. but this is an old yoga stunt. All right? Let's uh, take the pulse now, and the other free hand will beat uh, the rhythm, okay? As soon as you get it going there. Must mean I'm alive. dead from the waist down. Yeah, indeed, indeed. What are you, what are you doing? It's here? a stunt whereby the pulse seems to change in one hand and not in the other, and then suddenly change in the other, as if your heart were beating differently in your left and right arm. And of course, they can't do that. And the manager clinic wrote this up in an official report saying that this yogi had the power to stop his heart. They didn't bother to do this. Instead, they took the pulse. It's an old stunt off the back of cornflake boxes. And ladies, I hope I didn't confuse you too much. Thank, Thank you, you for your help. Thank you. That's interesting. Dare I ask how you do that? Well, well, I'm not sure how you do that. But it was, obvious, of, it was obvious to the ladies that it was stopping and it was, a, it was irregular on both sides. It's a physiological stunt. Uh, John, if you just get your arms in exactly the right way, you can press in and you can stop the circulation. And when the circulation begins to get weaker, it seems as if it slows down instead of actually keeping at the same rate but getting weaker. It's a very peculiar psychological effect. I see, but the heart actually, of course, is keeping the same I beat. hope. Yeah. <laughs> I do hope. It shows you that people are very easily deceived or believe what they sometimes wish to believe. That's right. And when I was in the hospital the last couple of days, I did try it on the nurse one time. The poor girl, she was new, and uh -huh. she had only been there about a week. And uh, my friend Steiner looked at me, and he said, uh, he said, don't do it. I said, oh, just for a minute. And the poor girl, she got so pale, I let it come right back again. Because she, thought, because she was saying, the, and the full stop? She thought she was going to lose me, you uh -huh. know, right there. <laughs> what do you think of the phenomena that's going on now that is um, getting a lot of, a lot of the channeling? It's, uh, it's, it's rampant out here in California where somebody speaks through or they become the entity or the body or the voice of somebody who's been dead 25. Some of the names are Lazarus, Ramtha, uh, Mafu. <laughs> All kinds of things. They're called channelers. And they say that these entities are 35,000 years in the past. Uh, a little hard to prove one way or the other. 
But when such intellectual giants as Shirley MacLaine support this sort of thing, uh, you really... <laughs> I believe... Now, a lot of people believe Shirley. I believe that Shirley believes. Yeah. I think she's quite a sincere lady. She's obviously an intelligent, very talented lady. I don't think she's trying to deceive anybody, but I believe that she's been deceived. After all, let's face it, this is spiritualism warmed over. Mm. Spiritualism used to be sit in the dark with your hands overlapping, play the Rock of Ages, and they could do anything in the dark. Now there's nothing to shoot at. There's no target, really, that's presented here. Uh, Edgar Bergen used to do the same thing. He, he changed his voice, and he sounded like Charlie McCarthy. No one ever said Charlie McCarthy was alive, and yet these people are paying $300 a session to go into these meetings, and these channelers themselves have got it made. One of them said on a TV interview not long ago, look, we can't prove that it's real, but you can't prove that it isn't. It's a perfectly well, non-falsifiable situation. Yeah, there's no way to prove that that's, that person does not is, is in that room if, if you can't you, see him. And if you choose to believe, you choose to believe, and they don't care if you don't choose to believe. But a lot of the, uh, the entities they're speaking through say some very deep things, such as, so be it, yes. was one that they quote a lot. Amen is a big one, too. Amen and so be it. Now, you pay $350 an hour for this? Well, it depends how it's said. You see, if it's got a lot of character to it, and as Shirley MacLaine says it, you know, it's worth it, I suppose. Did you... And some of these people who are channelers, uh, their backgrounds uh, are, are, are quite normal. One of the people was, a, was a, I understand, an insurance salesman or a, a shoe salesman or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other person ran at one time a, a dating service. Yes, a maybe a very old dating service, we're not <laughs> sure. Uh... Yeah, so you don't really believe it's just another well, fad you, going Well, you going can't through? prove it one way or the other. If you choose to believe, uh, they've got you. If you don't, they haven't. That's okay. about it. We'll be right back. Hello, hey.